Okay, let's complete our discussion of mass spectrometry by talking about the applications of mass spec in toxicology. You can see on this slide qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis, and then we're going to look at a few examples as well. <clears throat> so let's go to the next slide. Qualitative analysis. The major application of mass spec is to identify what compounds are present in a sample. This is qualitative analysis. Identification can be made by comparing characteristics with a reference standard. Another common method of identification is comparing full scan mass spectra with a mass spectral library. Evaluation of data regarding the extraction and derivatization of the molecule can also help identify the compound. Searching for metabolites of a compound using the full scan spectra can lead to the identification of analytes of interest. Qualitative <clears throat> analysis also <clears throat> uh, is supplemented by quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis is most often done with GC mass spec. The internal standard method is most often used. Stable isotope which is a labeled internal standards, are now in wide use for quantitative analysis. Deuterium is the most commonly used stable isotope. So let's look at some examples. There are numerous examples of analytical procedures that use mass spec. Analysis of amphetamines and related compounds is an interesting example. They are very simple but difficult to separate from many other small naturally occurring molecules. Amphetamine and methamphetamine can be separated from other compounds by means of several GC procedures using a number of GC detectors like flame ionization detector, the nitrogen phosphorus detector, and when derivatized an electron capture detector. Derivatizing these compounds improves their chromatographic behavior but also dramatically changes their mass spec. Derivatized amphetamine and methamphetamine have three or more intense ions, thereby substantially increasing the confidence of identification. Full-scale analysis of a sample provides a simple demonstration of the power to identify an unknown compound. A peak is identified and the spectrum is compared with the mass spectral library. The full-scan mass spectral analysis is a powerful tool but competent professional judgment is needed in interpreting the analytical results. You cannot always believe what the spectral analysis and the mass spectral library will come up with. Okay, here is uh, figure 11 from chapter 9. This is an example of a derivatized methamphetamine. Underivatized methamphetamine shows only a single prominent ion in the top panel. And as we go down and look at this, this is three different uh, derivatives have been used to derivatize the methamphetamine. And uh, you can see here what they are. TFAA, trifluoroacetic anhydride, and then PFPA is pentafluoropropionic anhydride, and the third is HFBA, which is heptafluorobutric and hydride, have been used to derivatize the methamphetamine. And uh, note the increase in the number and uniqueness of the ions for the derivatized compounds. As they're derivatized, we get a better um, mass to charge signals, multiple signals, which is uh, good for our analysis. Okay, here is the selection of the spectrum, uh, but just note, the selection of the spectrum can have a significant influence on the result of the library search. A peak with a retention time of 6.43 minutes is examined with the spectrum at 6.428 minutes, which is figure uh, 12A, uh, as you can see in this diagram at the top, here's A and here's panel B, and also a library search produced a result of that spectrum, which is panel B, uh, which is 
you know, a spectrum taken later in the same peak at 6.43 time, 39 minutes, suggests that the spectrum belongs to a different compound, as we'll see in panel C, which is on this slide. The actual compound was codeine, not the first choice on the library search result for the peak's retention time, as you can see, was on this particular slide. Okay, that concludes our discussion of mass spec. Thank you very much.